All right, so last night on the show, let's take a quick look at what happened. So, Yuchi Nagata, John Moxie, IWGP US title. It was worth the wait, brother. They beat the hell out of each other. They had a very fun match. Moxley hit him with the paradigm shift, dropped this poor guy in his head, pinned him. Great opener. They bowed to each other afterwards. Fans went nuts for Wild Thing, which is the new music for John Moxley. They loved the match. I thought this was a great opener. We had an inner circle promo, which I'm going to get to in more detail here in a moment. We had Cody come out, and he did an old school Dusty Road style promo. And long story short, he's an American. This Anthony Agogo is an Englishman. And uh, at the pay per view, he's going to be the American dream, Cody Rhodes, defending this country and his wife and his unborn daughter against this evil uh, Englishman. Some people loved it, some people hated it. I think that you could say, without question, that Cody Rhodes has incredible delivery, whether you loved it or hated it. SCU versus Young Bucks for the titles and the future of SCU as a team. Young Bucks defeated them, pinning Chris Daniels, who who bled like a stuck pig. I thought this match was great, great storytelling. And this may be the end for Christopher Daniels. I do remember on the uh, Jericho Cruise last year, uh, Daniels did this long speech where he teased that he was going to retire right there on the boat. But then he pulled the old Ric Flair and he said something like, I will never retire! We'll see about that one. But man, if that was the end of Chris Daniels' career, I mean, he went out on his shield. And I wish they would have given him more time there at the end. But who knows? Maybe they'll have some sort of, of ceremony or s- speech or something like that in the future. But match was very, very good. We had... A Christian interview where he was challenged by Matt Seidel for next week. And they also announced both of them are in the Casino Battle Royal. Orange Cassidy and Pac, I'll talk about more in a second. We had uh, Alex Marvez with the Hangman, where the Hangman challenged Brian Cage. They'll be having a match at the pay-per-view where uh, Hangman's going to try to get his number one contendership back. Or he falls even further down uh, down the deal. We had the Pinnacle Coronation which ultimately led to MJF challenging the inner circle uh, to stadium stampede at the pay-per-view, the stipulation being that if the inner circle loses, they must disband forever. We just saw that earlier in the show. I have more to say about this later. Uh, Britt Baker promo talking about the pay-per-view, and then uh, the main event was Darby Allen and Miro, and we talked about this yesterday. Who wins? Who goes over? Miro's on a tear. Darby's been a great draw, and he's been a great champion. What do you do here? Well, clearly the decision was Darby's over whether he has a title or not. And so Miro beat him clean in the middle. Miro is the new TNT champion, and afterwards we had a whole bunch of run-ins and etc. It looks like it'll be Scorpio and Ethan versus Sting and MJF. And also Miro versus Lance Archer as his first challenger. I thought Darby Allen was incredible on this show. I mean, he's been incredible his entire run. But he was awesome on this show. Great champion. Mike, any thoughts before I go into detail on the two things that I've saved for later? Uh, you know what? Go ahead. You just go ahead and fire into whatever it is, and we'll pick, pick, pluck it off from there. Go ahead. Okay, so the first thing is... Uh, the, the the pinnacle in the inner circle. I have a couple of questions about this. And I'm no, I'm not going to go to the ones I had last night about why did they did, do the order of the war games and the and the uh, uh, stadium stampede. Because quite frankly, both shows are in Daly's place. And so, like, the reason that they only did a one-match show for the live crowd was because they have no way of raising and lowering the cage. So all of my complaints about why don't you do war games in front of people at the pay-per-view... They may not have been able to. They can't raise and lower the cage. So that's probably the reason for that. But here's my <clears throat> big complaint about this. Well, there's two of them. First off, why in the world was Chris Jericho back? He got thrown off a cage. That guy's supposed to be dead. And he's back a week later. Now, with that said, did you see that big thing on Chris Jericho's arm? He fell off that cage. And he, I think he fractured his elbow. I, I forget the exact injury, but it's a legitimate elbow injury from falling off the cage. So he fell off the cage. He legitimately hurt himself. And then we've had a week of everybody talking about how fake it looked. Now, was that, well, let me just be clear here. 
you're saying the injury came directly from that. That's not yes. something that is being woven in because he needed to get no. his elbow cleaned up or something like that. He he whacked his elbow on the landing and like he fractured his elbow and now he's got that big thing on his arm. Now, I had this big speech yesterday about how like not listening to geeks on the internet and everything like that, but I have no idea what Chris Jericho thinks. But if I'm Chris Jericho and I fell off that cage and I fractured my elbow and all I had to hear was how it was fake and I fell on boxes and it looked terrible, I'd be pretty mad. But anyway. But could you have waited a week? I would have waited a week. What I would have done, in fact, I would have waited longer because my feeling is Chris Jericho, first off, he fell off the cage. He shouldn't have been back this week. They could have done the same angle where MJF challenges the inner circle and he says, y- y- listen, we'll give you the rematch, but if you lose, you have to break up. And the question for the inner circle is, well, can we do this? We don't have Chris Jericho. In storyline, he's dead. Well, we're going to have to think about this. I, don't, I think it's next week. They're not on Wednesdays. They're on Friday or whatever the schedule is. But one of these Wednesdays, they're not on, and they're doing Friday show right before they do Double or Nothing. That's when Chris Jericho can come back. And it's like, oh, it's down to the wire with the inner circle. They have to make their big decision. Should we do it or not? And they say, yeah, we're going to do it. And the inner circle or the pinnacle laughs, ah, you're going to do it, you fools. You don't even have Chris Jericho. That's when Chris Jericho makes his triumphant return. He says, I am here. And then you go on to the pay-per-view. That's how I would have done it. And then Jericho wouldn't have been—he wouldn't have been there. So, the other, the, a lot of people are really upset about the uh, spring, the bubbly, because oh, it was too much like WWE. Listen, I don't care if you copied angle from WWE that got over then or gets over now. Do I want you copying voodoo and blood coming out of a dude's head? No, okay. If you liked it, great. If you didn't like it, I don't even have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with you liked it or not. It's up to you. Like, whatever. But here's my problem with it. Sammy Guevara cut a fantastic pay-per-view, or a fantastic promo earlier in the show, where he said, you either give us a rematch, or we will put you in the grave. I was like, man, this is some serious stuff here. They're going to put him in the grave if they don't offer a rematch. So then his plan to put them in the grave was to spray them with bubbly? (laughs) That didn't even make any sense. I thought there was going to be some violent, vicious brawl. And Anyway, that was my problem with it, not what they did. I don't have a problem with copying an angle that worked. Like, that's the whole point of wrestling. All wrestling is is about copying things. You copy things that worked, and you preferably don't copy things that didn't work. You can't argue that what WWE did with Steve Austin in the beer truck, like, it worked. People have been talking about it for 25 years. What, you can no longer do an angle because someone did it 25 years ago? You know, WWE, if they want to copy something from AEW, if it worked, fine. Whatever, that wasn't, that wasn't my issue. But anyway, those are my thoughts on that. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.